All right, in this, uh, in this lecture, uh, we're going to introduce the process of sampling and data acquisition. Uh, there's, there's one important thing that will come out of here, okay? There's one important concept in this whole set of slides, and that is uh, definitions. Uh, the definitions are going to be our way as engineers to communicate with our customers, to communicate with the judge, to communicate with the world about the performance of our system. Okay, so uh, this goes into your uh, requirements document. Remember, there's a whole section in the requirements document for you to write down the definitions. Because if you say error, I promise you that uh, 50 people in the room can define error in 50 different ways. If you say accuracy, 50 different ways. Resolution, 50 different ways. But you need to communicate with the judge, the customers, the boss, the clients, your coworkers. And so we're going to need a definition for everything. Now, you don't have to subscribe to the Valvano rule uh, unless you're doing the final exam, in which case you shall. Okay. All right. So uh, this is how all these pieces fit in. We're going to measure something. Uh, in lab 9, we're going to measure temperature. In lab 10, we're going to control speed of the motor. Okay. Uh, with the transducer, it gives me an electrical signal. Uh, in the context of lab 9, that electrical signal is a resistor. Okay. Uh, the resistor is going to go into a bridge with an instrumentation amp uh, and an analog filter, and we're going to sample it. Okay. That's lab 9. <coughs> In lab 10, the transducer is a tachometer, which gives us a waveform. At the, uh, four uh, this, the, the frequency of this wave is four times the oscillation, uh, the, the rotation speed of the motor. Uh, we're going to use positive feedback for glorious reasons, and we're going to get out here a square wave, uh, which is four times faster than the speed of the motor. We're going to use input capture to measure it. Okay, so that's lab 10. And then in lab 10, we're going to then use PWM and a uh, Darlington transdu transducer to get energy to back into the motor. But in lab nine, we're not changing the temperature in the room. We're just measuring stuff. Okay. Uh, this is built into your, into your microcontroller. Uh, in other words, we can sample multiple signals, and uh, we're going to have multiple analog filters and multiple amplifiers if we have multiple. But we can have one A to D converter. As a matter of fact, your microcontroller actually has two A to D converters. So you know how when you write to a certain port, it will start sampling? There's actually a second A to D converter. There's an ADC0 and an ADC1. Uh, and we actually used ADC1 when we did the MOOC because we could do sampling in the background. So the, so the student was using ADC0 to do their projects. Uh, but we could use ADC1 to actually sample their samples uh, alongside of them to make sure they were doing it right. So there's two ADC samples. They're both 12 bits. All right, so this is when I talk about specifications, uh, definitions. Okay, so they're listed in, in copious descriptions in the book. Uh, suffice it to say, these are things that you need to know in order to communicate with your customers about whether stuff works. Um, and the, the key thing here is to look at the subscript. In other words, if X is temperature, then the range is the temperature range, 0 to 40 degrees centigrade. Okay? And then the resolution, which is the smallest change in temperature, okay, is going to be something like 0 0.1 degree. And you go, hey, John, I got a 12-bit converter. Why, doesn't it, why isn't it better? Well, the problem is noise. Okay? And so it turns out resolution is another way to talk about noise. And the ADD converter is never the problem, the ADD converter. And then precision, again, the world will, will define it lots of ways. Uh, we're going to define it as the number of distinct alternatives. Well, and if it's linear, you can see that this is clearly just Rx divided by delta, okay? if it's linear. So in this case here, this is a, a almost 9-bit. Uh, these two together, 400 alternatives, uh, which is almost 9 bits. Uh, we've talked about frequencies of interest in lab 9. Uh, we're interested in something like... Uh, um, 0 to uh, 10 hertz. A uh, really tough question to answer is, how do you get this specification? Yeah? 
Yeah. Uh, There's, there's two ways to get this specification. So if you, here's a problem. Uh, lab 9, you are measuring temperature. Right? That's your problem. La measure temperature. And now I, you ask the question, what is the frequency response that you need? What is the frequency of interest of the temperature? Well, you know it includes DC, right? We, I, la I laughed at you last time, right? Uh, it shall include DC because that's the typical signal. But if it only includes DC, then there shall be one temperature for all time. Yeah, and, and get along with it. It's, it's 25 degrees and it will never change throughout eternity. Right? So we need some frequencies in order for it to change. So we can either do it mathematically or we can do it experimentally. Okay? Right? Mathematically would be uh, what's the slew rate of the temperature in this room, for instance? How, fa how many degrees per second can the temperature in this room change? I can do that math if I were a mechanical engineer. I take the thermal capacitance of this room, multiply it times the, the, the rate in which cold air comes into the room, and I can calculate for you the maximum slope of temperature versus time. And then I can use my fancy rule right, that says, uh, what's the derivative of cosine? What's the derivative of cosine? No, 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 no. Don't ever forget the omega. Well, the omega is the important part. What happens to the omega? It comes out. Okay, so the derivative of a cosine is the frequency, of the frequency times the sine. Okay, so it turns out I can relate um, this slew rate here to be the F is approximately equal to the dV dt. Approximately, omega actually, 2 pi F. It's approximately equal. So I can relate the slew rate of my signal to the frequency component of that wave. Now, obviously, you know that to get a straight line, we're going to need more frequencies. But that's at least an order of magnitude. And that's where, uh, that's where that 10 hertz came from. I said, well, you know, I can probably get one a half a degree, and, and uh, I can probably get a half a degree per minute, whatever, and then I can calculate the frequencies required to do that. The other is to measure it. And it's sort of circular, by the way. So it's to build it and then design it. Because <laughs> if I were to build my thermometer, what could I do? Right? If I had this all built, and I were to look at that signal in the frequency domain, right, what would I see? Okay. Wait, remember the, 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 the units? Remember the, the spectrum analyzer gives me what versus what? Amplitude. Amplitude. Uh, let me try an easier one for you to feel that. Let, let's say uh, I were to sample the, the, the phrase, hello world, right? I got a, mic I got a, I got a microphone and, uh, and an amplifier and a spectrum analyzer, and I sampled the, 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 the the expression hello world, and then I did my spectrum on that expression, I might see something like this. Okay, well, actually it's not going to be that pretty, it's going to be a lot more ugly. And then I were to look at my minus 72 dB. And now can you tell me, uh, and I see something, I see something really big here at, uh, tw uh, at 80 megahertz. I see something, at 80 megahertz, I see something really large. I see something really large at 22 kilohertz. And let me, okay, I don't know what kind of lights these are. Yeah, fluorescent. See those fluorescent lights up there? 22 kilohertz coming out there like, like abandoned. See 22 kilohertz in your signal? It's, it's not signal, it's, it's fluorescent lights. Okay. So I'm going to see some, I'm going to see a big 60 hertz waveform, by the way. Uh, but Accounting for all the noises that I expect to see, can I tell what my frequencies of interest are? You see it? Right, assuming there is no noise, my frequencies of interest are right here to right there. Okay? F min to F max. All right. Um, <coughs> Noise is a big deal to Valvano and should be a big deal to anybody who's an ADD converter. Um, there, there's, uh, 
there's a couple of parameters that uh, that incorporate both noise and calibration, uh, and they. Uh, to get it right on the test, yes, but to get it right in life, realize it's, it's harder to measure the same thing for 12 months in a row than it is to measure the same thing 12 seconds in a row. Okay? So you gotta be careful when you collect multiple data points on, a, on the multiple uh, measurements on a constant input, it's a measure of noise. Okay? And we're going to calculate the standard deviation. And if we do repeated measurements under exactly the same conditions, we're going to call that something different than if we do it under different conditions, uh, different operators, different machines, different transducers, different days. Somehow this is much harder. Okay? Uh, but we're going to do them both just to make sure we understand what we're doing. Now we're going to talk about some software, because uh, what's the purpose of a data acquisition machine? to affect good in the world, right? I want to detect something. Is there a burglar? Is, there, is the motor spinning too fast? Is the temperature too hot? Uh, I want to embed a lot of decision making in my software to come up with a, a rule, a, a, a condition, a thought. Okay? And now we have a much harder problem, and that is, are you thinking correctly? Uh, did your robot actually hit the wall? Yes or no? Okay? So often when we talk about a machine, it's doing something that has value. And then now we want to define that value in some way uh, that is obvious to the humans, okay? like events. And so a true positive is if I hit the wall and the machine says you hit the wall, that's a true positive. A false positive is it says, I hit the wall, but you didn't, right? Or worse, you know, the baby dies and the, and the alarm doesn't go off. Right? False negatives kill people. False positives make people hate your machine. Okay? <laughs> they do. Uh, there's also a, sometimes uh, there is something called a true negative, like, uh, you know, like those worried people. They look out the back door and say, oh, I'm not being robbed. Okay? Or, I'm still alive. Right? <laughs> I look down and I'm breathing. True negative. Right? Not dead. I know I'm not dead, you know. Sometimes true negatives mean something and sometimes they don't. But uh, uh, this, is a, this is a lawyer thing. And that is, uh, what's the cost of true, both true pi, false positives and false negatives are both bad, okay? But some lawyer has to come up with a cost. How many babies will I let die no, 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 they're doing it. Don't, don't kid yourself. How many, you know, the speed limit. Why is the speed limit 70 on the turnpike? Because they don't care if you die, right? If you wanted to minimize death, you would drive at 55, stay alive, you know. But I lived old enough. Some of you, you probably aren't old enough to remember the, the time when the government said no, nobody shall die on the highway anymore. And we got, had to drive at 55 everywhere. And it was awful. <laughs> People hated it. Big traffic jams. And so we said, you know, we went to our senators and our president. We said, let us die. You know? <laughs> if, I have to, if I have to sit in traffic one more day, I'm going to kill myself. So we might as well. <laughs> the point is, these, these parameters are always numbers to somebody. Now, to you, let me, let me encourage you to be human. OK? Just 101. Please be human. Don't, don't be callous about life. Okay? But nevertheless, people want to know, uh, for instance, what's the likelihood uh, of the baby dying? That's prevalence. Because okay? it matters. If you just put a baby down in the room uh, and just looked at both the true positives and the false negatives, those are the, people's, those are the babies that would stop breathing. Okay? Uh, and then you multiply, divide by all the babies, and that tells you the prevalence. That tells the world how important it is. That's why, you know, that's why we, we uh, you know, look for breast cancer, and we look for uh, uh, lung cancer, and we look for brain cancers, because they're prevalent. But we don't look for some of the weird ones, because they're not so prevalent. Okay? Um, and then sensitivity is a measure of our instrument, and that is um, 
um, of all the babies that die, how many of you are going to save? Okay? Uh, but the specificity is uh, how annoying it is. Every time the alarm goes off, you know, and the police show up at your door, uh, what was the chance they had to find a burglar when they get there? Okay? And so these are clearly trade-offs. Okay? And now the, the, the lawyers get involved and they go, what's the value of your instrument? Okay? And so you can have the positive predictive value, which is the true positives all the, over all the positives. Okay? So if, the, if it, the alarm goes off, I mean, if the true po false positives uh, is the alarm going off, so the bottom of p positive predictive value is the number of alarms, and then what is the value of that? And negative predictive value, and if the alarm doesn't go off, What's the value of that? Anyway, suffice it to say that it's not about bits and bytes, it's about saving lives, right here. So you need these terms whenever you're detecting something. So in summary here, uh, it's a little bit circular. In other words, you gotta build it in order to know it. Uh, but uh, please, throughout the rest of your life, whenever you quote a, a number, uh, create a definition and define how it is you mean and how it is you measured it because I promise you the world does not all take 445 L. Okay, questions on this part? So my moral of this story is go ahead and be human, save lives, try not to let the numbers cloud your, your humanity, okay? But others will, others will.